tonight. The Johannesburg Metro Police Department says hundreds of its officers have been investigated for unlawful conduct. The majority of cases related to unbecoming conduct by officers. Officials say they're determined to continue targeting rogue elements within the force, but it comes as the case of fraud has been laid against the Metro Police Chief and also some of his senior officials. We got you in there. You are still relaxed with the money we did. Johannesburg Metro Police Chief Chris Ngobo is determined to clean up his department. From July to November last year, there were 224 cases against officers investigated. The charges ranged from assault and rape to fraud, robbery and corruption. However, Ngobo says while they are bad apples, his top officials are clean. We do get complaints. If people didn't win a tender, uh, people complain, they get investigated by the city manager. Um, but as far as I know at the moment, no one is being charged of any corruption or fraud. At the same time, a case of fraud relating to traffic fines has been opened against Ngobo and senior officials by Justice Project South Africa. But he's not concerned. Yeah, but those guys are not normal, so I'm not worried. <laughs> if it's guys that are not normal, I'm not worried. They put ranks that uh, I don't know who offered them. To put ranks, they must be offered by the National Commission. Police in Alberton have confirmed they're investigating the case and view it in a very serious light. Many of the charges against JMPD officers have had to be dropped as the people who opened the cases are not willing to testify against officials. This, however, has not deterred the department from continuing on its drive to root out rogue officers. Meanwhile, an investigation is underway into the JMPD chief and he will have to answer to allegations of fraud. Kathy Mushashana, E! News, Johannesburg. So how big is this problem? Joining us now on Newsnight, Chief of the Johannesburg Metro Police Department, Chris Ngobo, good evening to you and a very warm welcome. These statistics that we've just reported on, do they embarrass you? No, you must remember all over the world, the police, because they wear the uniform, they carry the gun, they have the power. So you've got plus minus 10% of the police abusing their powers and members of the public offering them money in, in exchange for not writing a traffic fine. So it's, a, it's an international phenomenon, but I'm very well, keen... Let, let, let's talk about the South African phenomenon. Yes. We, we have literally hundreds of cases here. Yeah. It does suggest, not all, but it does suggest that many of your officers are out of control. No, I would, I would not say that. But remember, if a member of the public complains, I get consent. Because we've got to keep the dignity, we've got to stick to our police regulations. So reasonably the problem is there and we're admitting that is there, we are doing something about it. It also suggests, and you can deny it as much as you want to, that there's no leadership to speak of or any discipline. Well, uh, I'm the leader, I'm the officer in charge. And the buck and, stops uh, with you, doesn't it? And the buck stops with me. And generally, when I was a student leader at VETS, everywhere when I'm where I worked, I'm known as a disciplinary. Are you, so I am are you passionate are you, are you, are you, are you exercising that discipline sufficiently? I'm exercising it. That's why if you're caught stealing, for example, the officers were caught in the northwest in Pochopstrom, instead of helping a truck that was uh, having a problem of liquor all over, they took the liquor for, for themselves, we're charging those police officers. You talk about rogue elements with, within, within, yes. uh, within, the, within the JMPD. What, what, do you, what do you mean? I mean people who don't do the right thing. For example, instead of writing you a fine, they take money and pocket the money. We also have some of our staff uh, members in licensing. In order to get a license, you've got to pay 2,500. That is completely unacceptable to me. What, what sort of environment exists within your department that allows these rogue elements to, uh, to continue operating, often uh, unhindered, unimpeded? Well, we work with the community. The community offers the people. For example, somebody wants a Code 10 driver's license very quickly, does not go, want to go through the bureaucracy. They offer the employees or my staff members money. But it's very important, particularly in Johannesburg. We work with communities from other countries. It's very embarrassing for police to take money from the community. Mm. Is this random and opportunistic, or do you believe that it's slightly better organized? I think in licensing it's organized, but the, the 10 runs, the 20 runs taken in the street, I, I think it's random. You talk about wanting to root this out. Yes. Are you doing it quick enough? And if so, what are you doing? 
Well, I'm hindered by the law. There's the Labor Relations Act. I can't wake up in the morning and chase all those rock elements away. They've got to go through a formal hearing. They're represented by the unions. The union leaders, they ensure that Are they deliver the process. Are you being held to ransom by the unions? Is that what you're suggesting? You must remember in South Africa, unions have a lot of power. They postpone the hearings. They disrupt the hearings. They make sure that... Uh, they delay the discipline as far as we can. So they, they, they are hindering your they job? They are hindering in us really in, in the process of ensuring that there's proper discipline. What can you do about department. it? Well, one is to amend, the, is to get strong presiding officers who would not tolerate situations where unions come in in the hearings and then they, they delay the hearings. If we stick to the rules, I think we will, we will win the battle. Do you concede that the statistics that, uh, that, we've, uh, that we've reported on tonight, 160 cases of conduct on becoming between July and November last year, bribery, theft, corruption and fraud, 25 cases, six cases of assault, uh, four cases of negligence, uh, seven cases of absence without leave. Do, do you concede that when we read these out and you look at these in the cold light of day, that those of us who drive cars simply have no faith in your department and that you also have a lot to do in order to restore that faith? I'm accepting that we've got a lot to do, but the motorists as well have a lot to do in terms of not offering the officers money. We are doing a lot in terms of the department, our code of conduct, our internal affairs department, uh, trying to improve the qualifications and the standard of reasoning of the police officers mm. because some of the things comes from backgrounds of people where they come from. We are doing a lot as a department mm. to try and improve the situation. Just a final question. You yourself and I understand other senior officers are facing fraud charges from an organization. Uh, one of the members of that organization says hundreds of thousands of motorists are defrauded and are currently being defrauded by the JMPD. In the report that we've just played, uh, you laugh this off. You, you dismiss it. You say that they are anonymous issue. Yeah, I really love it. Off. Remember that uh, South Africa is a constitutional state. If people have a problem, they can complain to the city manager, they can complain to the mayor, they can go to the public protest. Or they can lay, char or they can lay charges against Yes, you. I agree with you. But this particular organization wanted a contract from us because they didn't get a contract. They wanted a contract where we can use them to trap police officers mm. when police officers are doing wrong things. We said, so no, you're we will you're do it on you're, our alleging, own. you're alleging sour grapes? In other yeah, words. I think it's sour grapes. Thank you very much for uh, joining us. Uh, Chris Nwobo, who is the chief of the Johannesburg Metro Police Department here on Newsnight on this Thursday. Let's uh, stay with the transport issues, and motorists are in for an uphill ride. Not only will you be paying more for fuel than the road accident fund levies uh, during the course of this year, but the rising price of crude oil, coupled with the ongoing violence in Libya, makes it almost guaranteed that a stiff fuel price hike can be expected as soon as March.